The city's name means radiating light in Latin. According to a legend, once upon a time, the residents of a small fishing village saw an angel who showed them a place with a ray of light. A church was built right on that spot, and later, a city developed around it. I'm in Lucerne, my friends. My name is Diana, and I only have a day to enjoy the beauty of one of the most picturesque cities in Switzerland. I'm starting my journey right here on Mount Pilatus. You can't visit Switzerland without seeing the breathtaking Alps, can you? And by the way, I'm in an altitude of over 6,500 feet right now. You can go up the mountain by cable car, but it's not that cheap. A round trip costs $72, but believe me, it's worth every penny. The mountain is named after Pontus Pilate. According to the legend, his soul found peace right here, right on the shore of this mountain lake. Every full moon, he would hold out his hands covered in blood to wash off his sins in the lake's water. A bit of a freaky legend, but you forget about it completely as soon as you're on the mountain. What to do here? Well, it's enough to just take in the stunning view and mentally prepare for the busy day ahead. Also. You can hear the national Swiss instrument, Alpine horn, and see the caves where, as local legend has it, real dragons used to live. In the Middle Ages, the government forbade its local residents from climbing up the mountain. People believed that evil fire-breathing dragons lived there. The dragons turned out to be quiet on the contrary to evil, but actually rather helpful. Once a traveler got lost in the mountains and they guided him back home, at least that's the story he told his friends. Honestly, the caves are pretty small. I guess the dragons were tiny. I wish I had more time. I could easily spend an entire day on Mount Pilatus. From a bird's eye view, Lucerne is gorgeous, but I want to get to know it better right from the ground. I suggest getting down by train. This is the steepest railway in the world. It tracks reach an angle of 48 degrees in some parts. Each year, the railroad station operates from May to November. During the winter, you'll have to use a cable car. I know that technically this is safe, but it's also pretty scary, especially if you're afraid of heights like me. We're literally scaling the very edge of a cliff. Oh, we are so high, but it's beautiful. Ah, the Alps. After my trip up and down the mountain, I like to go for a cup of coffee, somewhere with some local sweets. Even though these cupcakes are vegan, meaning made without any eggs, butter, and milk, they're delicious. Following smart food habits and a healthy lifestyle is very popular here. I suggest getting around Lucerne by foot. The city's quite small. First of all, you'll save money on transport, which is expensive in Switzerland. Secondly, you'll get to enjoy the city's sights right as you go. Head to the historical center in order to get a feel of the very soul and atmosphere of the city. I'm in the center right now. Let's see what Lucerne is all about. The School of Fine Arts was founded in Lucerne in the 19th century. At the time, popping up paintings on the facades of buildings was fashionable. Some have survived to this day. These designs add quite the fairy tale touch to the city. If you think that the most vibrant carnivals in the world take place solely in Venice and Rio de Janeiro, think twice. Every year, at the end of the winter season, a colorful spectacle is hosted in Lucerne. Tourists from all over the world attend the carnival. The Frecci family are the festival's main characters. They look scary, but fear not. The locals seem to be very fond of them, so they should be harmless. Not far from the Mole Town, there is a regular sculpture card out of a cliff called the Dying Lion. The monument was created in 1821, and since then it has been considered to be the token of courage and devotion. Mark Twain called this statue the most touching and pied in the world. Lucerne's main statue, the Dying Lion, 
was erected in the honor of Swiss guards who died defending the French king during the uprising. The whole part? It's so moving, I even get goosebumps. You can visit Luzerne without seeing the Kappelbrockel Bridge. I think it's one of the most picturesque bridges I've ever seen. The bridge is the main attraction of Lucerin, the city's signature landmark. Of course, all the tourists feel the need to take pictures with this lengthy beauty, understandably. The Chapel Bridge is the oldest wooden bridge in Europe. They began building it back in the 14th century in order to protect the city from the side of its lake and river. And right in the middle of the bridge stands an octagonal water tower. The tower used to be a prison, then it became a reservoir. Now there's a souvenir store in Sed. Every morning there's a farmer's market that operates right next to the bridge. You can find the most authentic, high-quality Swiss products at a very reasonable price. Which local cheese I should try? Do you prefer a more mild taste or one that's more pronounced? I want to try an assortment. Okay, so we can start with Klevenalp. This cheese is made only 20 kilometers away from here. Can you imagine? Only 40 miles away. That's awesome. Wow, fresh alpine milk. It smells so sweet. Do you want to know the secret behind alpine cheese? The higher above sea level, the fresher the vegetation. And the more quality grass the cow eats, the better the milk, and even more so the cheese. It's packed with omega-3 fatty acids. The yellow color here is vitamin A, carotene. Alpine cheeses are the healthiest in the world. This cheese is delicious. Yes, I'll take it. So yummy and right from the source. This is great. Do you know why Swiss cheeses aren't as famous as Dutch ones? No, why? Because the Swiss eat all their cheese themselves. That's the difference. It's so good. The Jesuit church was built in the 17th century. From the outside, it looks pretty, modest, and especially remarkable. But as soon as you're inside, you'll know why we're here. The mass of snow white and Baroque styled marble stucco was manufactured by German masters and was highly valued here. But it's not even about the stucco. Look at these windows on either side. Light passes through them and literally floods the entire space, creating a very festive and sublime mood. Lucerne is indeed the city of light. The church has a chapel for St. Claus, otherwise known as St. Nicholas elsewhere. The inner chapel has a state of the saint in full length. His attire has been preserved here. Brother Claus is the main saint of the city. He had quite the unusual fate. At the age of 50, the Lord summoned him, Claus, leaving his earthly life, became a hermit. They say he didn't eat food nor drink water for over 20 years, being nourished only by his prayers. It's time for lunch, and I need to try their traditional meat pie. The local pie, by the way, I know a place where they teach you how to make one yourself. Let's go find out the recipe and... In Lucerne, they love this veal mushroom puff pastry pie, or the chugle pastete. It's called, it's apparently really yummy and truly a specialty. What is this cookie miracle? Let's find out. Let's start with a piece of meat. The sauce turned out too smooth and at the same time aromatic. 
thanks to all the spices and wine, it's magical, a melange of flavors. I'll try the meat. You guys, I love it. Well, now that I'm not full, I can move on. I'm heading to Lucerne's fascinating museum of transport, and I'll get there by boat. That way, I can admire Lake Lucerne at the same time. There is an amazing legend about Lake Lucerne. When creating Earth, God sent an angel with a divine vessel to fill all the planet's lakes with water. The angel flying over the Alps brushed against one of the mountains and accidentally spilled some water. And that's how Lake Lucerne appeared. The lake, by the way, has the shape of a cross. Switzerland is a country of lakes. There are 1,484 lakes here. The water is so clear and turquoise. The landscape's incredibly beautiful. It's so convenient. I got right to the shore by ferry, and the next stop on my route, the Transport Museum. It's right here. It's actually the most popular museum in Switzerland. You can look at it, touch, and even ride some of the exhibition pieces. There are over 3,000 exhibition pieces presented here. Trains, airplanes, cars. It's not just a museum, but an entire scientific entertainment complex. Wow, I feel like every little boy's dream is have a railway like that. And now that's every grown-up boy's dream, a huge car collection. Oh, the museum is interactive. There are so many attractions here. For instance, there's a showroom where you can choose any car. And then you can check it out to its finest detail. Let's choose Easy Bentley, baby. Of course, the best choice, a classic model. It's so luxurious. Of course, the best choice, a classic model. It's so luxurious. Actually, it reminds me of those game shows on TV where everyone presses a red button to vote for the car they most like, and then they bring out the car with the most votes. Well, I'm lucky. Oh, a worthy selection. Now I'm rushing over to Rosengart Art Gallery that has several originals by artists from the 20th century, including Pablo Picasso. This magnificent collection was accumulated and curated by the famous gallery owner Siegfried Rosengart. His daughter, Angela Rosengart, has continued his work since. By the way, here's a portrait of her by Picasso. What a stunning woman. Pablo Picasso worked in almost every genre, definitely allowing for some wide-ranging imagination. What do you think this painting is called? That's right, gentlemen, with a pipe and flowers. Everything is in its place. The flowers, the gentleman. What else does he have left to do other than smoke his pipe as he waits for his beloved? This photo has a strange backstory. Apparently, David Duncan approached Picasso for an autograph. Instead of an autograph, Picasso drew an owl, cut its eyes out, and replaced them with a cut out of his eyes from a photograph. He called the end product his self-portrait. The face is very familiar. I think this is Madame Rosengart herself. Good afternoon. Is that you in the painting? You're Madame Rosengart, correct? Yes. The owner of the gallery, right? Yes, I am. Nice to meet you. My name is Diana. Nice to meet you. So I'm actually a TV show host. I hear you are a muse for Picasso. That's awesome. What was it like to be a muse for an artist genius? Picasso and my father were good friends, and we would visit him often. 
He was always very friendly. He would give us small gifts, like small drawings. And one of those visits, for no particular reason, he decided to paint a portrait of me. Posing for Picasso was definitely intimidating. I was well aware that the most famous artist of the 20th century was painting my portrait. It was both terrifying and incredible. Regardless, I was so happy, of course, when I saw what came of it, although I've never had my actual nose displaced. I like the portrait. A wonderful surprise. Here they are. The first one, this is the second one, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Yes, but here it's pretty easy to recognize you. It's true. It's been a long time. I think he really liked you because they are charming depictions. Yes, yes, yes. He didn't really distort me as much as he could have. The first portrait was painted in 1954 and then in 1958 when I changed my hair. And Picasso said, you've changed your hair. Now I have to do another portrait. Thanks so much. You've let me in on more than one. I could ever imagine so many interesting details. Truly exclusive insight. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now I'm heading to a place popular with both the locals and tourists. It's a guaranteed good time. For dinner, I'm going to have fondue, the most important national dish of Switzerland. Oh, and of course, there's an interesting legend behind it. Alpine shepherds. When trudging atop the mountain would take a small amount of food along. In order to travel light, one day a shepherd only had a piece of dry cheese, wine, and bread left. Instead of losing his cool, he melted the cheese in his pot, added the wine, and began dipping the bread. And that's how the ultimate swish dish emerged, the fondue plate. Let's try it. Oh, it's so gooey, appetizing, wow. Literally mouth-watering and sizzling. Mmm, the aroma of genuine creamy Swiss cheese. It's so delicious, mmm. Listen guys, an incredibly simple dish that is utterly delicious. That's the power of high quality cheese, such real milky, creamy wonder, yum. This restaurant hosts a folklore shore every night. I can't miss out on this funny opportunity. I'll even participate in the contests. The folklore program has officially begun, and now they're performing the national Swiss song, the Yodel. The Yodel developed in mountainous alpine villages. Shepherds shouted across valleys and peaks to be heard. Okay then, I'll have to test out the strength of my vocal cords. Very good, chorus song, we start. Thank you. But this is only just the beginning. Now, I need to be able to produce at least some sound as I try out the alpine horn. You need to hold it with your lips. It's important that as little air as possible passes between your lips, then blow. <laughs> Come on, go in the middle. I think I found the most cheerful place in Lucerne. The Swiss, Australians, Americans, and the Russians sing along and dance together. So cool. A true folk party. That's how locals celebrate. They spend their free time doing this just for fun. Overall, it's obviously that people in Switzerland are proud of their country, their customs and traditions. People are so open and hospitable. They welcome me with such warmth. It's very nice. I'll continue enjoying myself. My one day in Lutheran has come to an end. And it's time for me to say goodbye to this fabulous city that managed to win over my heart in just a flash. Lutheran truly feels like the very soul of Switzerland. From its river to the mountains and lakes to the old town, all bright, warm and cozy. 
The locals are so proud of the traditions and they share them so generously that in just one day, I was able to feel like a part of the city. My name's Diana. See you in a new city. Bye-bye.